Hey, hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to talk about the manifold absolute pressure sensor from this Mercedes A-Class from W176 generation. I will show you what you can look for if you have a scanner with the live data available for the car. Also the importance of these sensors, especially on this turbocharged engine. Actually, before even opening the hood, you can go ahead and connect your scan tool into the OBD2 port, which is located right under the steering wheel. Now you can go ahead and take out this cover and on this engine you've got actually three manifold absolute pressure sensors or air pressure sensors. First one is located right after the air filter right here. This one is more like an atmospheric pressure sensor which will detect the ambient pressure. This is used by the computer mostly to compare the values between the other two sensors. So it will have a start point. So the air comes through the filter. The pressure of it is getting measured by this sensor, then it goes further into the turbocharger. It gets pressurized, very important. Then that pressurized air goes through the intercooler in order to cool down that air since this turbocharger is very hot. The intercooler is on the bottom of the car in front of the grill. Then the air pipe comes out through this way and it has to go through the throttle body and before the throttle body we've got the second manifold absolute pressure sensor which is basically checking up the pressure inside the intake pipe after it was pressurized by the turbocharger and then after the throttle body we've got the intake manifold which is back here and we've got the third manifold absolute pressure sensor which will detect the pressure after the throttle body release that pressure inside the intake manifold and as you might already notice this car doesn't have a mass airflow sensor as many other cars so therefore these sensors are very important in order to keep the correct air and fuel mixture inside the cylinders the computer will use and rely a lot on these three sensors now with the key in the second position and with the scan tool connected and this one is going to be either the one after the turbo or before. So how I'm going to find out, I can disconnect this first sensor. First press on this clip. First release this safety pin. And then from the other side, it seems like it doesn't affect any readings. Now I'm going to go ahead and unplug this sensor. Gotta press on that safety clip and release the connector. Well, it seems like nothing happens on the scan tool either. I'm going to unplug the third one. We can already see a reaction once I unplug the sensor. This scan tool I have is not the best. Therefore, it does not read all the sensors, which can possibly read the pressure of the air. I've got only one which will respond while I increase the rotation per minute of the engine. So what should we expect if I accelerate right now? you should see the pressure increase and then when I decelerate the pressure will decrease and then stabilize again so let's see you can see it increases and decreases so let's see one more time increase decrease and then stabilize again I don't know why I cannot see the other two sensors reactions but at least I can see one and it does respond However, if you have a high-end scan tool, it will show you much more than that. Anytime you do any tests with the key in the second position or with the engine on, make sure that you have the voltmeter always in direct current 20 volts and the terminals are correctly placed in position for voltage reading, not for amperage. The ground is usually always in the middle on these map sensors. So we've got on the first pin the 5 volts reference and on the second one is going to be the signal and we've got signal as well one way to check if that pin is the ground you can connect the other probe of the voltmeter on the positive terminal and you should find 12 volts so now we know this connector gets signal there is voltage both on the signal and the reference wire so we can leave it like that the middle one gotta be the ground and then we gotta find four volts this is for the signal wire and 5 volts as a reference. Lastly, I want to point out some things that you can look for while you analyze the live data. 
since we've got the sensor before the throttle body and after the throttle body, when the car is, for example, idling, that sensor is going to read more vacuum than this one, slightly more vacuum than this one. Now, the question is, when you accelerate, what is going to happen? This sensor is going to read a lot more pressure because a lot more air is going to be pumped into the, it's going to be sucked basically into the intake. And this one is going to read a little bit less pressure because that extra air, which is basically waiting to enter in the throttle body, which before was closed, now it's released and therefore the pressure is gone. And depending of if the turbocharger is activated, it might also read high values. So it really depends how hard you accelerate and if the engine is under load. And now the question is, what will happen when you decelerate, when the throttle body closes? Well, this sensor is going to read the maximum vacuum possible while the engine is running, I mean. This one is going to read a very high value, a lot of air which before was entering in the throttle body, now it's accumulating here and it's creating pressure and inside the intake is creating the vacuum which will also slow down the engine of course together with the injection and if let's say for example the blow off valve of the turbocharger is blocked or it doesn't work then you've got that extra boost which will come and smash into the throttle body basically and that will also create a lot of pressure which will be read by this sensor if you see a very high pressure when you decelerate it might also mean that this blow valve is broken so i hope you get the point it's very important to know how the sensor will react under a load or under a deceleration that's basically you can test a lot of air sensors because you actually put that air in movement so you can see if they react to that change and as for this sensor you'll not see big changes major changes even though you accelerate fast or decelerate all right guys so that was pretty much it if you have any questions leave them in the comments i will try to respond to them also if you want to see more videos about this car with this engine there is going to be a link in the description below with a playlist and until next time drive safe so i can see you in the next video